Welcome to another fascinating journey into the annals of ancient history. Today, we embark on a remarkable adventure to uncover the life and legacy of one of the most iconic figures in the history of Egypt, Pharaoh Khufu, also known as Cheops. His reign, which took place over 4,500 years ago, left an indelible mark on the world, as he oversaw the construction of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the awe-inspiring Great Pyramid of Giza. In this video, we'll delve into the mysteries of Khufu's reign, exploring his family, his accomplishments, and the enduring legacy of this enigmatic pharaoh. Join us as we journey back in time to discover the man behind the pyramid, the ruler who sought to immortalize his name in stone, and the enduring symbol of ancient Egypt's grandeur. So, grab your virtual torches, fellow explorers, as we step into the realm of Pharaoh Khufu and the timeless wonder he left behind. Let's begin! Pharaoh Khufu also known as Cheops in Greek, was an ancient Egyptian king who ruled during the Old Kingdom period of Egypt's history. He is the second pharaoh of the Fourth Dynasty. He is best known for commissioning the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Here are some key facts and information about Pharaoh Khufu. Pharaoh Khufu's name. Pharaoh Khufu's name like many ancient Egyptian names, had a particular significance and was closely associated with Egyptian beliefs and culture. The name, Khufu, is the anglicized version of his Egyptian name, which was originally written as, Kanum Khufu, or, Kanum Khuf. Here's a breakdown of the name and its components. Kanum. The first part of his name, Kanum, is a reference to an Egyptian deity called Kanum. Kanum was a creator god, often depicted with the head of a ram, and he was associated with water, fertility, and the shaping of humans on a potter's wheel. This choice of a deity's name in the pharaoh's own name could symbolize his connection to divine creative forces and the idea that he was chosen by the gods to rule. Khufu. The second part of the name, Khufu, is believed to mean, protective, or, shining. It was a common element in many Egyptian names and was often used to express positive attributes or qualities. In the context of Pharaoh Khufu's name, it could signify his role as a protector and ruler of Egypt, as well as his divine or shining status. The combination of Kanum and Khufu in his name can be interpreted as a statement of the Pharaoh's divine connection and his role as a ruler who was chosen and protected by the gods. Kanum protects me. Pharaohs often used names and titles that emphasized their divine authority and the divine aspects of their rule. It's important to note that the study of ancient Egyptian names and their meanings is a complex field, and interpretations can vary. The meanings and significance of names often depended on the cultural and religious context of the time, as well as the individual preferences of the pharaoh and his advisors. The Royal Titulary Pharaoh Khufu, also, had several names and titles during his reign in ancient Egypt. These names and titles reflected various aspects of his rule, including his divine authority, royal lineage, and accomplishments. But at first we must know that. The name Horus for Pharaoh began to appear historically before the dynastic era in Egypt, and it remained the only title held by Pharaoh until the Second Dynasty. Then other titles came to him alongside him, starting with the Fourth Dynasty until they were completed. Pharaoh had five titles to hold. Since the Fourth Dynasty, Pharaoh has had five titles, which he assumed when he ascended the throne. These titles are, the personal name, the coronation name, the Horus name, the golden name and the Nabataean name. The Nabataean name carries the title of King of Upper and Lower Egypt. Here are some of the names and titles associated with Pharaoh Khufu. Horus name. The oldest form of a pharaoh's name, often enclosed in a serec, a sort of heraldic crest, representing a palace facade. Khufu's Horus name was, Medjedu which translates to, enduring and established. The Horus name symbolized his role as a protector of Egypt, ensuring its enduring stability and order. Nebati name. The two ladies, the heraldic goddesses Nekbet and Wadjet, representing Upper and Lower Egypt respectively. The Nebati name used by Khufu was Medjader, which translates to who has adhered to the two ladies. Golden Horus name. Khufu's golden Horus name was, Baikui Mibu, which means, the Golden Double Falcon. Throne Name Pharaoh Khufu's throne name was, Kanum Khufui. The prenomen was a title that a pharaoh adopted upon ascending to the throne and was often associated with the sun god Ra. 
and the name mean, Kanun protects me. Rain. Khufu's reign is thought to have taken place around 2580-2560 BCE, during a time when Egypt was experiencing a period of political stability and monumental construction projects, such as the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Great Pyramid is considered one of his most significant achievements and is a testament to his power and influence during his rule. Estimates vary regarding the exact period of his reign. The Turin Papyrus, which is from the era of the New Kingdom and is considered one of the most important documents regarding the succession of Egyptian kings, mentions children, a 23-year rule. The Greek historian Herodotus says that he ruled for 50 years, and the Egyptian priest Manetho, who lived in the 3rd century before him, means that he ruled for 63 years. He also mentioned at the time of the 4th dynasty that his rule was 17 censuses, whereby a census was usually made of the number of livestock and areas allocated for the purpose of taxation. The census was usually done every two years but sometimes it was done every year the census was every two years during the reign of the children. So it would be a period his reign was 34 years. It's important to note that the exact lengths of reigns for many ancient Egyptian pharaohs are not always well documented, and our knowledge of their reigns often relies on a combination of archaeological evidence, inscriptions, and historical records. Therefore, estimates can vary, but the figure of approximately 23 years is a commonly accepted estimate for the length of Khufu's rule. Family Tree Pharaoh Khufu's family is a topic of historical interest, although the information about his family is somewhat limited compared to his monumental achievements. He had a large family with at least 9 sons and 15 daughters. Here is what is known about his family. Parents. Khufu's father was Pharaoh Sneferu, who was the founder of the 4th dynasty of Egypt. Sneferu is known for constructing several pyramids, including the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid. It is believed that Khufu succeeded his father Sneferu as Pharaoh. I spoke in a previous videos about Pharaoh Sneferu, and I will leave you the link in the description if you want to learn about Pharaoh Sneferu and his reign. Khufu's mother was Queen Hedefirs I. In the early 20th century, it was believed that Khufu was one of the princes and had married into the Sneferu family. However, excavations carried out by Sorge Reisner on the Giza Plateau in 1925 led to the discovery of the tomb of Hedefirs, G7000X, east of the Pyramid of Khufu, and many furniture, flasks, offerings, and seals were found in its tomb. On some of these antiquities, the name of Pharaoh Sneferu was found, and it was also found that Hedefirs was nicknamed Mut Nesut, meaning Mother of the King. Thus, it seems that she was Sneferu's wife, and therefore Sneferu and Hedefirs were Khufu's parents. Wives Pharaoh Khufu is believed to have had several wives during his reign. One of his most prominent wives was Queen Meritites I. She is known from inscriptions and is believed to be the mother of some of Khufu's children, including his successor, Pharaoh Dejadefer. Queen Meritites I's full name was Meritites, sometimes spelled Meritites I. Her name means, Beloved of Hathor, a reference to the Egyptian goddess Hathor, or, Beloved of her father. She held the title of, Great Wife of the King, which was the highest title for a queen consort in ancient Egypt. As the great wife of Pharaoh Khufu, she held a position of great honor and importance. Queen Meritites I was buried in a mastaba, a flat-topped, rectangular tomb, at Giza, near the pyramids constructed during her husband's reign. Her tomb is known as G7530-7540, and it contained funerary offerings and inscriptions that provide valuable insights into her identity and status. Role and Influence As the great wife of Pharaoh Khufu, Queen Meritites I likely played a significant role in the royal court and had a role in religious and ceremonial functions. Her position was not only symbolic but also held political and religious significance. Queen Henutsen Queen Henutsen was the second wife of Pharaoh Khufu. Their marriage was a significant political and royal union, cementing her position as a key figure in the royal court. Henutsen is not known to have ever borne the title, King's Daughter, or, King's Bodily Daughter. Both titles which would have unmistakably designated her as a princess. Queen Henutsen held the title, King's Wife. These titles reflect her high status and role within the royal family. 
as a queen and, she likely had important ceremonial and religious duties, and her role extended to supporting the pharaoh in matters of governance and diplomacy. Queen Henutsen's burial site is one of historical significance. Her tomb, designated was most possibly interred in Pyramid G1C. Sons. Khufu had several sons, and some of them are mentioned in historical records. Prince Kawab, Kaab. He was the son of Khufu and his wife Queen Meritites I and the half-brother of DJ Defer and Kafra. He was given the title, eldest king's son of his body, and it is generally agreed that he was the crown prince and intended heir of Khufu. Kawab married his half-sister Queen Hedefirs II and they had a number of children including Marizank III, Prince Duanhor, Prince Kamsakem, and Prince Mindjidef. DJ Defer, enduring like Ri. He was also known as Rajadef. He was the child of a Queen Henutsen who killed Crown Prince Kawab, his brother and the rightful heir to the throne, and married Kawab's wife Hedefirs II, who was also his half-sister, to cement his position. Kafra, or Kafra, appearing like Ri, was the son of Khufu and Queen Henutsen, and the brother of his predecessor DJ Defer. His chief wives were Queen Kamarunibadi I, the mother of Menkora, his successor, and Queen Marizank III, daughter of his brother Crown Prince Kawab. He had a number of sons including, Menkora, Nebimaket, Miswer, Kenturka, Duanra, Nikauri, Nikor, and Sekemkari. We also know of a couple of his daughters, Kamarimabadi II and Shepsestkau. DJ Defhor. DJ Defhor was a son of Pharaoh Khufu and Queen Meritites I. He was still alive during the reign of Menkora, Khufu's grandson. Hence he must have been buried towards the end of the 4th dynasty. DJ Defhor was buried in Mastaba G7210-7220 in the East Field which is part of the Giza Pyramid Complex. His sarcophagus is now in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Baufra. Also read as Baufer and Ra Bau Ef. He is known from a story in the Papyrus Westcar and from a rock inscription at Wadi Hammamat. Babif. Also known as Kanum Beef I. Kufukaf I. Also read as Kekufu I. Kufukaf was part of the highest level of the administration and was elevated to the vizierate probably during the reign of Kafra, his brother. This rank, the highest at the time, was strictly reserved to the close family of the pharaoh during the 4th dynasty. Minkaf I. He served as vizier possibly under Khufu or Kafra. Horbif, also known as Baifhor and Horbaf, his title was, King's Son. Daughters. While not as well documented as his sons, it is likely that Khufu had daughters as well. The names of some of his daughters are mentioned in inscriptions. Nefershabet, beautiful one of the East. A statue of her, now in Munich, probably originates from her tomb. There is a well-known slab stella depicting the princess that is now in the Louvre. Hedefirs II. She married her brother, the crown prince Kawab, with whom she had at least one child, a daughter named Marizank III. After the death of her first husband, she married another of her brothers, DJ Defer, who later succeeded Khufu as king of Egypt. Marizank II sad face, she loves life. She married her half-brother Horbif. Meritites II. Mary Shiots, Meritets, or Meritites A. Beloved of her father. She married the director of the palace, Akathotep, a non-royal court official. Kamaranibadi I. She was a wife of King Kafra and the mother of King Menkora. It's important to note that while some family members of Khufu are known from inscriptions and archaeological findings, the details of their lives and roles are not as extensively documented as those of the pharaoh himself. The relationships within Khufu's family were significant in terms of succession and the royal lineage, but much of what we know is based on fragmented historical evidence. Monumental Construction Projects Khufu is perhaps best known for his ambitious building projects most notably the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza. This massive pyramid served as his tomb and was built over a period of approximately 20 years. The scale and precision of this project demonstrate the advanced architectural and engineering capabilities of ancient Egypt during his reign. It is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and is the largest and most well-preserved of the Egyptian pyramids. It is a masterpiece of ancient engineering and architecture. 
It was originally approximately 146.6 meters, 481 feet, tall, making it the tallest man-made structure in the world for over 3,800 years. The precision and scale of the construction continue to astonish historians and engineers. In addition to the Great Pyramid, Khufu oversaw the construction of a complex of structures at Giza, including smaller pyramids for family members, temples, causeways, and mastabas, tombs, for high-ranking officials. These structures are collectively known as the Giza Pyramid Complex. Khufu's reign marked a period of significant advancements in pyramid construction techniques. His architects and builders developed innovative methods for quarrying and transporting massive limestone and granite blocks, as well as precise methods for aligning the pyramids with celestial objects. Khufu commissioned the creation of numerous statues and monuments, some of which have been discovered in various parts of Egypt. These statues served both religious and political purposes, reinforcing his divine right to rule and commemorating his achievements. Economic Prosperity the construction of the Great Pyramid and other associated structures required significant resources and labor. This suggests that during Khufu's reign, Egypt was economically prosperous, with a well-organized workforce capable of executing massive building projects. Trade and Diplomacy Pharaoh Khufu, during the Old Kingdom period of ancient Egypt, is believed to have organized expeditions to the Sinai Peninsula and the Nubia. These expeditions were primarily focused on mining activities, particularly the extraction of valuable minerals like copper and turquoise. The Sinai Peninsula was a significant source of copper and turquoise, two highly prized minerals in the ancient world. Copper was especially valuable as it was used to produce tools, weapons, and decorative items, while turquoise was used for jewelry and amulets. The minerals obtained from the Sinai Peninsula were essential for Egypt's economy and trade. Copper, in particular, played a crucial role in the production of bronze, an alloy of copper and tin, which was used for a wide range of tools, weapons, and sculptures. Archaeological evidence, including inscriptions and artifacts, has been found in the Sinai Peninsula that provides insights into Khufu's expeditions and the mining activities that took place there. These inscriptions often commemorate the achievements of the pharaoh and his officials in obtaining these valuable resources. Some of the inscriptions and reliefs discovered in the Sinai Peninsula depict the pharaoh's name and titles, as well as scenes related to mining activities. These inscriptions highlight the role of the pharaoh in organizing and overseeing these expeditions. While Khufu's expeditions to the Sinai Peninsula were primarily focused on resource extraction, they also served as a means of expanding Egypt's influence and control over neighboring regions. The minerals obtained from the Sinai Peninsula were essential for various aspects of ancient Egyptian life, from toolmaking to religious symbolism, making these expeditions of great economic and cultural significance. During the reign of Khufu, trade missions were also carried out to Phoenicia, and naval missions were docked in Byblos, currently in Lebanon. Alabaster pot sherds and a copper axe bearing the name of the pharaoh Khufu were found there. Wadi al-Jarf Wadi al-Jarf is an ancient harbor and archaeological site located on the Red Sea coast of Egypt, not far from the modern city of Suez. The site is of significant historical importance because it contains the remains of what is believed to be the world's oldest known artificial harbor. Here's what is known about Khufu's Wadi al-Jarf port. Wadi al-Jarf is believed to have been constructed during the reign of Pharaoh Khufu, primarily for the purpose of facilitating the transportation of valuable resources from the Red Sea coast to the Nile Valley. It is one of the earliest known examples of a purpose-built harbor. The harbor was strategically located to serve as a terminus for expeditions to the Red Sea region, particularly the Sinai Peninsula. From there, materials such as copper, turquoise, and other minerals obtained from the Sinai Peninsula could be transported by boat to the Nile River where they would continue their journey to the heart of Egypt. The site at Wadi al-Jarf gained significant attention due to the discovery of ancient papyrus documents known as the Wadi al-Jarf inscriptions. These inscriptions, dating to the reign of Khufu, detailed the construction and operation of the harbor, as well as the logistics of the expeditions. The inscriptions reveal that Wadi al-Jarf served as an administrative center and storage facility. Officials oversaw the organization of resources, including the collection and storage of materials obtained from the expeditions in the nearby regions. 
Archaeological excavations at Wadi al-Jarf have uncovered remains of stone-built structures, including storage galleries, anchoring points for boats, and other facilities. These discoveries provide valuable insights into the organization and logistics of ancient Egyptian expeditions. The inscriptions found at Wadi al-Jarf suggest that the harbor's construction and operation were directed by Pharaoh Khufu himself. This emphasizes the pharaoh's central role in overseeing and coordinating major projects and resource management during his reign. Religion. Like other pharaohs of his time, Khufu was closely associated with the Egyptian pantheon of gods and was considered a god king. His role in religious ceremonies and rituals was significant, and he played a key role in maintaining mayat, the concept of cosmic order and justice. Khufu. Is he a tyrant ruler or a great scholar? Khufu is often described as a cruel leader. Contemporary documents suggest that, unlike his father, he was not seen as a beneficent ruler and by the Middle Kingdom he is generally described as heartless ruler. In the West Car Papyrus he is depicted as being keen to increase his own power and ensure the continued rule of his family, but is not a particularly cruel monarch although he does offer the life of a criminal to test the skills in resurrection of a magician, which is often quoted as evidence that he was evil. Manetho states that Khufu was contemptuous of the gods in the early years of his rule, but later repented and composed a series of sacred books. Although there is no mention of these books in later works on the pharaohs of the Pyramid Age, the idea that Khufu was not a kind ruler is repeated by a number of sources. It is sometimes suggested that so few representations of the king remain because they were destroyed after his death. The allegation that Khufu used slaves to build the Great Pyramid first appears in Herodotus and is often repeated despite a wealth of evidence to the contrary. It is clear that the pyramid was built by skilled craftsmen and that the heavy manual work was undertaken by farmers who provided seasonal labor when the fields were submerged during the inundation. These manual laborers were well recompensed for their work and seem to have been well looked after. Herodotus also claims that Khufu closed all of the temples, there is no evidence at all of this, and that the daughter of Khufu was prostituted in order to help pay for the construction of the Great Pyramid. Again this rather unlikely claim is not supported by any evidence. It is worth noting that there is no indication left by any of the workers, artisans or nobles during his lifetime that Khufu was despised. Herodotus states that the Egyptians could not even bear to speak his name. Yet he was worshipped as a god after his death and his cult continued well into the late period and was very popular in the Roman period. The ring of Khufu, pictured, was originally thought to have belonged to him but it is now agreed that it belonged to a priest in his mortuary cult. Pharaoh Khufu's Legacy Pharaoh Khufu left a lasting legacy that continues to be a subject of fascination and study. His legacy is primarily associated with his monumental construction projects and his role in shaping ancient Egypt's history and culture. Here are key aspects of Khufu's legacy. The Great Pyramid of Giza. Khufu is perhaps most famous for commissioning the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu or the Pyramid of Cheops. It is the largest and most well-preserved pyramid in Egypt and one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Great Pyramid stands as a testament to ancient Egyptian engineering and architectural prowess. Its construction involved groundbreaking techniques that have continued to captivate scholars and engineers for centuries. Pyramid Complex at Giza In addition to the Great Pyramid, Khufu oversaw the construction of a complex of structures at the Giza Plateau. This complex includes smaller pyramids for family members, temples, causeways, and mastabas, tombs, for high-ranking officials. The complex represents the pharaoh's desire for an impressive and enduring funerary monument. In conclusion, the reign of Pharaoh Khufu stands as a remarkable chapter in the history of ancient Egypt. His legacy is eternally intertwined with the colossal monuments he commissioned, most notably the awe-inspiring Great Pyramid of Giza. This colossal masterpiece not only showcases the architectural genius of its time but also serves as a testament to the grandeur and engineering prowess of ancient Egyptian civilization. Khufu's rule, characterized by economic prosperity and religious significance, left an indelible mark on the cultural and historical landscape of Egypt. His enduring legacy endures through the ages, reminding us of the remarkable achievements of this great pharaoh and the enduring mystique of the land of the Nile.
We hope you've enjoyed this journey into the world of Pharaoh Khufu and his unparalleled contributions to the ancient world. If you found this video informative and engaging, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights into the history, culture, and wonders of our world. Thank you for joining us on this captivating adventure through the sands of time.